Jesus, that you've given us the opportunity to worship you, to praise you with our songs tonight. We thank you for the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. God, in the service this morning, Lord, one more time. God, we need you to move. We need you to touch our hearts, Lord God. We position ourselves tonight by faith to hear from you. Yes. Lord, we pray that you would touch us. Pray that you would encourage us. God, be blessed by our praise and worship tonight. Lord, inhabit the praises of your people, we pray. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want us to go to the Lord in prayer this evening. And if James could help lead us, uh, we're going to uh, sing one song and then uh, take some needs to the Lord in prayer. If you're here tonight and you have a need, we want to believe God to touch and meet that need tonight. He's a miracle-working God. He's a God of breakthroughs. And if we'll trust Him tonight and let Him have access to our problems, amen, Jesus is a fixer of problems. He's a fixer of broken things, and we believe that tonight. We want to pray uh, for uh, Brady, uh, who's one of our young people. He was sick last week. And, has some health issues. We want to pray that God touches him, gives him a healing in his body, and that he will no longer have the issues that he's been having with pain, and the doctors will have wisdom and figuring out what's going on with that. We want to pray for Samantha Bockerset, young lady that we know, college age young lady, I believe. Uh, she was in a car accident a few weeks back, and pray that she would recover and uh, be healthy and whole. We want to pray for uh, Samantha tonight. We want to pray for uh, Pam Rodriguez, continued healing in her body for a friend of ours that we pastored in Florida. Her name is Karen. She's been fighting a battle against breast cancer. And we want to believe God for a healing for, for Karen today. We want to pray for Candy. Uh, she was talking to me today at church this morning. And uh, they want to do a procedure on her ankles, but her heart has to be uh, in the right condition. And the last checkup she had with her heart, there were some issues with blood pressure and heart rate that the doctors were concerned about. And so let's pray that God will resolve those issues. Amen. Bring healing for Candy and that she can get relief from this pain in her ankles as well. And uh, let's believe God. And those of you who are watching online tonight, whether you're a young person or whatever your age might be, young at heart, amen. God can meet your need tonight. He can bring healing. He can bring wisdom. He can bring direction for your life. Whatever your need is, if you'll just trust Jesus tonight, He can touch you. And I want us to sing this song. James is going to sing this song about how awesome our God is. Amen? Sometimes we focus so much on the problem and God seems to get smaller. It should be the opposite though, right? We look at how big God is and our problems should get smaller. And so as we sing this tonight, let's give God those needs that are on our heart and then we'll pray together.
tonight. Pray for these things that we've mentioned. If you have a need on your heart tonight, lift it to that mighty God that we serve. Amen. Let him touch your name tonight. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, that you hear and you answer prayers. Lord, when we pray in faith, God, you respond to faith, Lord, that has the right object. God, the object of our faith tonight is who you are, Jesus, and what you did for us on the cross. We know that by your stripes there's healing. God, we know that you've made provision, God, for us to have peace, for us to have wisdom, for us to have provision for the things that we need in our lives tonight. I pray that you'll meet those needs. We pray tonight for Brady, God, that you'll touch him, bring a healing in his body. Lord, if he's still suffering with the flu, I pray that you would take that all away. These issues with pain that he's been dealing with, God, that the doctors don't know what's going on. Lord, you do. You're the great physician. We believe you'll touch him tonight and encourage him. We pray for Samantha Walker said tonight, healing from the injuries that she sustained in this car accident. God, give her health and wholeness in Jesus' name. We pray for Pam Rodriguez, healing of this heart in Jesus' name. Continued ministry and continued anointing upon her life as she pastors along with her husband there in Virginia, Lord God. Use them, God, by and give them a testimony tonight. We pray for Karen Bridges, Lord, healing of this breast cancer in Jesus' name. We pray for a divine reversal of this breast cancer. God, that healthy cells would come and replace these cancerous cells. God, that this family, these doctors will see what a mighty God you are. Lord, bring a miracle in Jesus' name. We pray for each need that's represented in this house tonight. Meet it, God, as only you can. For those who are watching online, God, hear their hearts cry tonight. Minister to them. Give them peace. Let them know Jesus that you're as close as a mention of your name. Lord, we just give you thanks. We give you praise for all that you're going to do tonight in response to these prayer needs. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, amen. shared a few years back titled Courage. I think if there's something that young people need in these last days that we're living in, especially if you're going to live for God, be a young person that is uh, following after Jesus, you're going to need some courage in these last days. And uh, we're going to look at some things tonight. We have a quick video clip that we're going to watch and then we're going to get into the Word tonight. Watched an air show yesterday 
and we watched a, a pilot, a woman pilot, which was pretty amazing. I think one of the first, one of the few that has ever flown for an F-35 stealth uh, plane uh, uh, exhibition show. And it was a woman pilot. She did some maneuvers in that F-35. It takes some courage to do. They were talking about the G-force involved in some of those turns. She did one maneuver where she did a complete square with the airplane. She went like this, up like this, upside down, and then came back down. And they said it was close to 9 Gs. And it uh, makes your body feel like it's about 1,500 pounds. And uh, if you're not conditioned for that, uh, you'll pass out. Your body will just, uh, it can't handle that much pressure. But with the training that these pilots have, and a little bit of courage in their heart. It takes courage to, uh, to fly a machine like that and to be ready for war, to be ready to defend your nation. That's courage. What are some things that you can think about tonight? Um, in a world where religious liberties are being stripped away from Christian pastors and churches, I believe it's going to take courage to continue preaching the gospel, to continue telling people about Jesus. Yes in these last days, sharing Christ with a dark world. And uh, they've been ravaged by sin, uh, but we're going to have to stand up and say, no, this is right. This is what God's Word says is right. And young people, you're going to have to take a stand in your school and say what's right. Maybe even to a teacher in a respectful way. Maybe even to an administrator in a respectful way. Uh, not letting uh, the indoctrination that's taking place in our public schools change you from what Jesus wants you to be. And not only that, but the peer pressure, of course, of your classmates. Uh, sometimes the crowd may be going one way, and you're going to have to say, no, I'm going to go against the crowd, and I'm going to follow Jesus. Amen. I think of courage in the Christian world, and I think we have it on the slide there. Uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, if you've never read that book, it talks about people who gave their life. That's what a martyr is. They gave their life for the cause of Christ and for the sake of the gospel. And this book is still being written. Uh, it talks about the 12 disciples and how uh, Christian history says that they were killed. They died. We know that John, the revelator who wrote the Gospel of John and the book of Revelation, it talks about him in, in the Fox's Book of Martyrs. But we know he was boiled in a cauldron of oil. They tried to kill him, but it didn't work. He, he, he lived. Uh, the torture that John the Apostle went through. And he wrote us the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and Revelation. And then he, we know he was banished to the Isle of Patmos. They thought after they boiled him in oil, that if that didn't kill him, if they put him on this island, that he would eventually die. He lived a long time. God used him to do a lot of things. In fact, most of the book of Revelation was probably written while John was on the Isle of Patmos. And you can read this book, and it talks about men and women throughout history up until just a few years ago, what was it, 1990, uh, 95, 97, when Columbine shooting happened. We know uh, Cassie Bernal, Rachel Scott, the two gunmen that went through their school were putting gu guns to their classmates' heads in uh, Columbine High School in Littleton and asking them, are you a Christian? Do you believe in God now? And Rachel Scott is, is said by many of the eyewitnesses or other classmates that survived that they were, they were in that position where a gun was put to their head by these gunmen who'd already killed many other, other, other classmates and asked them, do you believe in God now? And they said, yes, I do. And it was the last words they spoke. That's a martyr. That takes courage and strong faith to know that you know that you know God's never done anything wrong for me. How could I forsake Him? And so if you ever get a chance to read Fox's Book of Martyrs, like I said, it's still being written. Some people uh, that are believers in third world countries like China, communist countries, Muslim countries, are still being killed just for naming the name of Jesus. And that's the kind of courage that God wants to develop in each one of us in these last days. Courage is part of God's character that He wants to put into our lives. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, probably demonstrated the greatest amount of courage the world has ever seen when he was beaten and he was innocent. He was crucified, mocked, put on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. It took courage. And he was 100% man, just like you and me, and 100% God. So he felt the pain. He felt every strike that was put across his back. 
he felt when they thrust that crown of thorns into his skull. And he did it to pay the penalty for your sin and for my sin. That took courage. If we're going to be like Jesus, we need to ask God. God, give me courage. Help me to stand in the face of adversity and be the person that you've created me to be. Look at Psalm 27. Psalms 27 and verse 14. It says this. Psalms 27 verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And I want us to look at just two uh, simple instructions that God gives us about courage from this verse. Psalms 27 14. Two instructions that God's word gives us about courage. Number one. What does it say in that verse? It says, wait on the Lord. Nobody likes to wait, right? In our culture, we're a fast food, drive through uh, generation. You don't want to have to wait a long time at stoplights. If you went to the air show this weekend, you learned what waiting is all about. <laughs> our family did for sure. We made it all the way down. The, the, the air show was down on Milton Proby where the airport is, the Colorado Springs Airport. And uh, it was right across the field from the Amazon, new Amazon facility. We drove all the way down Powers, and we got about maybe a half a block away from Milton Proby, where we had to turn left. And it took us an hour to go that half a block, because everybody was going to the air show. We don't like to wait, right, in traffic. We don't like to wait in drive through When you go through the drive through at the bank, it shouldn't take 30 minutes, right? When you go through, that's not a drive through that's a parking lot, <laughs> right? When you go to Burger King or McDonald's or Sonic, you don't want to wait in the drive through longer than the people who are walking inside. And so uh, we don't like to wait in those, uh, in those kind of situations, and probably rightfully so. When we go to a mechanic, what do we usually want to know? How long is a repair going to take? Right. But most mechanics, whatever they tell you, you can probably add about an hour, right, or <laughs> more. Because we don't usually get a very good uh, time estimate. We don't want to wait in doctor's offices. And sometimes that ends up being the case, right? Nobody likes to wait there. Nobody likes to wait in lines at Elitch's or Disney World or Waterworld. Uh, we want to get right to the fun that we're having. But this waiting that Psalms 27 is talking about, it's not just talking about looking at our watch and tapping our foot, passing the time. But this is talking about waiting like a waiter at the restaurant. You know how they come out with their with the drinks on the on the uh, platter to give you your drinks or bring your food. This waiting that is is talking about in Psalms 27 is that kind of waiting. So there is a time element involved, but it's more about serving like a waiter in a in a restaurant. And so if we want courage, God's word is telling us we have to learn how to wait upon the Lord, serve the Lord. Meet his needs. What does he want from us? He wants worship, right? He wants fellowship. He wants consecration. He wants us to be dedicated to him and his purposes. And that's how we serve the Lord. That's how we wait upon the Lord. That's what puts a smile upon his face. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 and 31. It says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God wants to help us. If we'll learn how to wait, that's when He can develop courage in our lives. Amen. A strength to stand against the flow of the crowd and to be distinctly God's own uh, child, His own uh, creation that He's working through. God wants us to be learning how to wait so he can develop courage in us. Waiting on the Lord in our spiritual disciplines, what are those? We ought to be making a habit of praying. We ought to be making a habit of Bible study, learning God's Word, memorizing God's Word. We ought to have a time of personal worship. Maybe it's in the shower when you're getting ready for school or work, but hey, if that's the time you have, take it to personally worship the Lord. Don't just wait till Sunday, amen, or Wednesday night. Worship the Lord every time you have the opportunity. That's a discipline that we need to develop in our lives. Waiting on the Lord through witnessing. Being quick to testify, to tell somebody about Jesus. Even if they've never accepted Jesus into their life. And to tell them, you know what my God did for me? And maybe our witnessing, our testifying will be what brings them to a decision for Christ. Going to church 
is part of waiting upon the Lord. God, I, I believe in you to move in a mighty way in Sunday morning service and Sunday night youth and Wednesday night Bible study. We come expecting God's going to do something. Uh, fasting. There's lots of different spiritual disciplines. Fasting is not just not eating, like when you're getting a medical test, but fasting in the Bible, a spiritual discipline, is always coupled with prayer. When you fast, you set aside your food that you normally would be doing. You set aside your TV time. You set aside your computer time. And instead, what do you do? You pray. You say, God, I need you more than my necessary food. I need you right now more than I need to be on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever my social media involvement is. I need you more than that. So I'm going to spend some time seeking you. That's what fasting is all about. That's all discipline. Those are all disciplines that will help us to learn to wait upon the Lord. Using spiritual disciplines properly will help keep us humble. When you read the Bible, you go, wow, uh, there's still a whole lot more that I need to grow in. Amen. There's a whole lot more that God needs to do in my life. When we fast and pray and we're hungry, but yet we're seeking after God, and He begins to speak to us in those times. Some of those things that He deposits into our spirit are things that will last a lifetime. We need to allow the disciplines to make us humble, to make us broken, to keep us contrite and trembling at God's Word at the foot of the cross. That's the purpose of of spiritual disciplines. God's not impressed because you read six chapters of your Bible and somebody else only read two, right? That's not how it works. No. He's just impressed that you've come by faith and you want to be broken. You want to be shaped. You want to be molded. You want to become more like Jesus. And you're choosing to do that through prayer, through going to church, through the spiritual disciplines. And so let's not make those things a dead work, but let's make those things... Uh, uh, habits that can help us become more like Jesus. Amen? If you're going to have courage uh, from God in our lives, if we're going to have that to become overcomers, we have to learn to wait upon the Lord. God, how can I serve you? How can I put a smile upon your face today? God, I want to get closer to you. I want to bless you. And if we'll have that heart, God's going to teach us uh, how, how we can do that, how we can have courage in our lives. Number two, Psalm 27 says, Be of good courage, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He will strengthen your heart. So number two, we need to be of good courage. Why does God tell us to be of good courage? Well, it's probably because there must be a bad courage, right? Can you think of some ideas or some thoughts of what bad courage might look like tonight? Probably every night when we turn on the news, we see some people who do some pretty daring things. Yeah. But how many know just because it's daring doesn't mean it's courage? There are many people who said that the kamikaze pilots that downed uh, the, the uh, ship in Pearl Harbor were courageous. No, they weren't. They were suicide bombers. They were daring, maybe, but they didn't have the kind of courage that God's talking about here. That's something different. What would be an example of bad courage? Maybe September 11th, the terrorists who destroyed over 30... 300 lives here in our own country. Yeah, it was daring to do what they did, but it wasn't courage. That's not God's kind of courage. Robbing a bank is pretty bold, but that's not courage. Taking illegal drugs, playing Russian roulette with a loaded gun, those are all stupid things to do. Things that are foolish. They may be daring and bold from the world's eye, but that's not the kind of courage that God is talking about. And that's why He says, be of good courage, what God calls good, Amen. we need to learn what that is, and that's what needs to develop the courage in our lives. What does good courage look like? It's doing what God says, plain and simple, isn't it? Yes. Good courage is doing what God says, even if nobody else around you is doing what God says. Courage is standing, even if you have to stand alone, like that video that we watched just a moment ago. Mark Rutland says this about courage. Courage is that willingness to deny my own flesh and do what is right and noble regardless of the cost. Are we at that place tonight where we're willing to deny our own flesh, what we want, what our five senses want to do? We deny that and we do what God says is right and what God says is noble, even if it means that we have to self sacrifice a little bit. Not only for our own lives, but for someone else. 
self-sacrifice so that someone else might come to know Jesus and be drawn closer to Him. That's what God wants to develop, courage in our hearts. To be a follower of Jesus Christ takes courage, doesn't it? Jesus didn't say it would be easy to be a Christian. In fact, He said the exact opposite. Somebody told you when you got saved that you'd have no more problems, that it would be the easiest life ever. No, they, they were not telling you what the Bible says. It'll be difficult. Now, the Bible does say the way of the transgressor is hard. Yes. If you don't have Jesus, it's much more difficult than if you do have Jesus. But it doesn't mean that we'll have an easy life just because we come to Christ. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 26, Jesus said this, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, let him take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? It's not going to be easy to follow the Lord. You're going to have to deny your flesh. What you want sometimes is going to have to be laid to the side for what God wants. What's best for the greater good. What God says is the greater good. Lord, I'm willing to deny myself, to die to self so that you might live within me. Mark Rutland says this also about courage. Courage, true courage, is about valiant goodness. Where does goodness come from? It comes from God, right? He is good. He alone is good. Jesus, remember when the rich young ruler came to him? He said, good master. He said that to Jesus. And Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's only one good, and that is God. This man wasn't looking to Jesus as God. He was looking to Jesus as a man, as a, a wise master. And Jesus discerned that. And he said, don't call me good just because I'm a good man. And that's what you're aspiring to be as a rich young ruler. He says, there's only one good, and that's God. And so goodness comes from God. If we're going to have good courage, we need to ask God for it. Because He knows what's good. Goodness comes from His character, from His being. We need to ask God to help us know the difference between good and bad courage. Young people, someone's going to tempt you to do something that's foolish, that may be daring, that may be bold, like robbing a bank, like driving 90 miles an hour down Powers Boulevard, or driving drunk. Something foolish that may seem daring at the time, but you better be thinking about what God says is good. And He wants to develop good courage in you. And good courage won't leave you with a lifetime of regrets. Amen? Good courage will leave you with God's blessings. Number three, the last point I want us to look at tonight from this verse, Psalm 27. What's the promised benefit? What's the reward? If we wait upon the Lord, we let Him develop courage in us, we have, we're people of good courage. What's the benefit? What's the promised reward? It says, He shall strengthen your heart. Amen? God will strengthen your heart. You'll be able to stand like David, who most people say was under five feet tall, and go out against a Goliath that's nine and a half to, to eleven feet tall. They're not sure exactly how tall he was. And say, you come against my God. You come against the name of my God. You come against me with spear and sword, but I come against you in the authority of the name of my God. We have that kind of courage. God strengthens our heart to face the giants in our lives and have courage and not back down. When Satan is breathing his threatenings against our health, against our families, against our finances, we can say, no, my God is greater. He strengthens our heart. If we wait upon the Lord, we're of good courage. The Bible says God will strengthen our heart. Jeremiah 29 Verse 13, the Bible says, You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. We need to seek after God like it's that important. The parables that Jesus told in the Gospels about how important the kingdom of God is. We sell everything. He said there's men that sold everything they have to buy that pearl of great price, right? Jesus and his word ought to be that pearl of great price. We're willing to sacrifice everything else of value in our lives if we can just get a hold of Jesus Amen. and his kingdom. Seek, seek for me with all of your heart and you're going to find me. Not just a half-hearted effort, 
We don't just come to church because our parents are making us, right, young people? We come to church, we come to youth service, we're seeking after God, we're reading our Bible because we've got to have God in our lives. We need His strength, we need His direction. God will give us the courage to not compromise, to not give in to sin. He'll give us the courage to make the right choices and to please Him with our lives. He'll give us the courage to be a leader in our generation. It's easy to be a follower, yes. isn't it? Yes. To just follow the crowd. But God wants to raise up among the young people at Finished Work Worship Center. He wants to raise up some leaders in your generation. Stand up for what is right. Stand up for what is just. Even if you find yourself standing alone, God wants to give you that kind of courage. He wants to give you courage to make a difference, an eternal difference in the lives of your friends. And you don't have as much time as you think, young people, to make a difference in those friends' lives. The Bible says in James that life is a vapor waiting to pass. When you're young, you think you're invincible, that you're going to live forever and nothing's ever going to hurt you. But our lives can be snuffed out very easily. Amen. And so we need to have courage to tell our friends about God, to tell them about uh, Jesus and what he did for them at the cross before it's too late, before time is up in that young person's life. And so let's believe God. God's going to give us that benefit, that reward of strengthening our heart, helping us to be the people that he wants us to be. James, would you come back to the piano? I want us to close this service out in prayer. This hasn't been a long message tonight. But I believe God is speaking to us about courage. There's one thing that young people need in these last days is to be courageous, to have a godly kind of courage to face what God is causing you or allowing you to face. I think young people today face things that most of us adults didn't have to face with some of the temptations and the pressures that are out there. And uh, it's a real battle. Satan wants to destroy your soul. But if you'll trust God, if you'll look to the Lord, if you'll learn to wait upon the Lord, be of good courage. God says He'll strengthen your heart. He'll help you to be that young man or that young woman that He wants you to be. Amen. If you'll stand with me tonight, I want us to close in prayer. Yes. I don't know who this message is for. Many may be watching online. Your life's not right with God. Whether you're a young person, whether you're an adult. It takes courage to make a decision to follow Jesus for the rest of your life. It takes courage. I want to ask you as a pastor tonight, is Jesus the master over everything in your life? Is he in control or are you calling all the shots? Have you asked Jesus to forgive your sins? Do you have a daily personal relationship with Jesus? If you don't, God wants to save you. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 the Bible says behold I stand at the door and knock this is Jesus talking I'm standing at your heart's door and I'm knocking Jesus says if any man will open that door I will come in and eat with him and he can eat with me we can have that close personal relationship with God if we'll allow Jesus to forgive our sins if we'll turn away from what we've been doing that we know is wrong and we run back to God we say God I've got to have your help it's going to take courage to do that. But God wants to save you from your sins tonight. I want us to pray a prayer tonight. I'm going to ask those who are here to help you pray. They're going to repeat after me. You pray with them. Invite Jesus to come in. Invite Him to change your life and to make it what He wants it to be. And I believe He's going to forgive some people tonight. Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. died on the cross for my sins, paying the penalty that I deserved, and I am in need of you, Jesus, to be my Savior, to be my Lord. Please forgive me for all my sins. Let us know that you accepted Jesus as your Savior. Get a Bible.
if you don't have one, let us know. We'll make sure that you get a Bible that you can read from. God wants to speak to you through the Bible. He will if you begin to read it a little bit every day. Let God speak to you. You need to learn how to pray. Use the passages in the Bible like the Lord's Prayer. Different passages where Jesus teaches us how to pray. And begin to talk to God. Let Him know what's going on in your life. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear you pray. And you need to get involved with a youth group or a church. Get plugged in with other believers that will help you to grow in your walk with the Lord. I encourage you to do that tonight. If you made this decision for Christ. The angels of heaven, it says in the Bible, rejoice over one sinner who gets saved, who comes home. And I, I believe that there's rejoicing, there's happiness, there's a party going on in heaven over one person who's made that decision tonight. Believers, as we close this service out, James is going to lead us in a song for our altar time. What is the altar time for? It's a time of decision. It's a time of, God, what change needs to take place in me? What needs to die in my life so that you can live in me, Jesus? As we go to this time of altar and decision, I want to ask you, do you need God to give you courage in some area of your life where you've been afraid lately? God wants to take that fear away. He wants to strengthen your heart if you'll wait upon Him tonight. If you'll trust Him. Do you need God to help you do a better job of waiting on Him in prayer and Bible reading and other spiritual disciplines? Maybe you've been neglecting God. So you haven't got that strengthening because you haven't been positioning yourself. You've never fasted. You've not gone to church lately like you should. Whatever it might be. Do you need God to help you do a better job of having those spiritual habits in your life? Do you need God to give you wisdom to not have bad courage, but to have good courage? Are you saying tonight, I want to be a leader. I want to be a leader in my generation. I want people to look at me and see Jesus in my life. That's your prayer tonight as James begins to sing this song. Would you find an altar of prayer? Say, God, help me. I want courage in my life. I want to stand strong in these last days, even if I have to stand alone. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. It's time for altar. Hallelujah.
straight and narrow path that you've ordained for their lives, to see the blessings of serving Jesus, to see, God, that you'll strengthen their hearts, God, that they'll just fall hard after you. We just pray that you'll bless us tonight as we leave this place. Help us 